I'm uh, Riley Klitschke. I'm out of the Hastings store. I do sales there. And we're going to go over the S600 uh, controls on the armrest. We're in an S660 combine. We're going to go over the right hand controls here. We're going to start with the hydro handle. Um, you're going to have your unloading auger in and out. You're going to have your auto steering gauge and you're going to have your presets for your harvest uh, heights uh, up and down on your feeder house, lateral tilt with your contour master. Then you're going to have your real functions here, up, down, in, and out. Um, and this is also going to control your deck plates on a corn head. Then moving over to the console, we're going to have the separator engage and your feeder house engage, and also reverse is on here. Um, we're in a three speed machine, so we're going to have one, two, and three gears, parking brake, your idle, high idle, and wide open throttle. Uh, this is going to be your road mode, so it's going to lock out all the header functions, combine functions, so going down the road you don't poke a button and have some issues. This is going to be your real speed here. Uh, this dial here will um, adjust your head height once you are in a preset position. And they do bring up prompts on the screen. This one here is going to be header function, your hydroflex pressure. This one is going to be your rotor speed. It does show a prompt on the screen. Your fan speed. This one's going to be your chaffer position. Your rotor position. And then your head speed. How fast it's going to lower and, and raise. This is going to be your draper belt speed here. Um, these are going to be um, how you navigate through the screen rather than using the touch screen on your display. These are quick hot buttons that are going to be also labeled on your screen as well. This is going to be your climate controls, radio functions, lights, beacon, and hazards. Okay, we are now in a S600 series combine and we are hooked to a, a corn head as you can see. Uh, so first we're, what we're going to do is just run through some of the buttons on our command center display. As a, it's a little bit of an upgrade from the 70 series machines, a uh, little bit different layout too. So uh, just to start with, uh, when we hit that combine at the top right, it's always going to take us back to our main harvest screen here. Uh, if we hit the picture of the corn cob, it's going to take us into uh, another screen here and we can see our rows. We can back down the amount of rows we're taking in. If we don't have a green star display hooked up to this, it's going to show our moisture and our wet and dry uh, bushels per acre. After we push that button we can see we've got a new set of buttons here. So G and that's the page we're on. H is going to be our field totals. So you can change um, your client farm field here to keep track of your field totals. The I key is just going to be some more totals. These are going to be your crop totals. So it'll be all totals for soybeans as we have here. As what this is set for. And then J, if your 600 series combine is equipped with active yield sensors like this one is, uh, this is going to show your active yield status. It's going to show your calibration quality. We can see our last load accepted was four minutes ago and we've got 288 accepted loads in there. If we go back to the combine page, we can go to our next button down, which is going to be H, our setup. This is where we change our crop. We can see our grain tank level, we are empty, so I'll go ahead and set the empty level. I would recommend setting the full level too, as you um, as you get to that full point on the grain tank. These are going to be our default soybean harvest settings. Uh, you can come in here and change these. You can hit the setup arrow, and it's going to uh, take you to this page and just show you. Your, uh, machine settings outside of the cab. Next one down is our interactive combine adjust. This is where we will come to walk through uh, to try to help out uh, either grain damage, grain cleanliness, grain loss, or straw condition. So if we wanted to improve our grain quality, we'd put a check in that box, hit next. Uh, we could tell it that we've got cobs in there and it's going to recommend to decrease the sieve position um, by one millimeter. So we can accept that. And it's going to, we can see it's, the adjustments are being made. It's going to monitor, monitor that down here um, as we're harvesting. 
and then it's going to ask for your feedback later on. So that was in setup and the interactive combine adjust. That's just our chopper position and this is going to be our moisture page which I will cover later. Back at the combine page down at the bottom we've got our head. We do have an eight row corn head. It is a 30 inch machine. And then this is where we set our record stop height. So if I manually raise the corn head up to where I want the record stop height to be set at, I'll hit accept and it's going to change that percentage. And then here is the auto page. Um, so right now we've got our uh, header height sensing, the auto return to height, and then our contour master are all on for this corn head. We've got the book with the wrench, which is going to be where our calibrations are housed. This is going to be our uh, active terrain adjust. Uh, that checkbox enables the system. It's going to show you uh, your pitch and roll and adjust combine settings accordingly. And the last one on this page is our engine button. It shows us our hours, our filter, and then our percentage of the power that we're using. Uh, that is a quick run through of our uh, command arm display on an S600 combine. Okay, now we're going to do some calibrations on our S600 combine. Uh, we've got a, our corn head hooked up. To get into our calibration screen um, on this machine, we're going to hit our book with the wrench, and then we'll make sure we hit this upside down black triangle, and that'll bring us to our calibration screen here. So if I hit this drop down, uh, we've got a whole list of calibrations that we can perform. Um, if we have hooked up this corn head for the first time to this machine, we're going to want to do our feeder house raise speed and our header calibrations. So I'll go ahead and hit on the raise speed. It's going to want the combine on level ground with the engine running at high idle. I'll idle the engine up and hit accept. It's going to ask us to lower the feeder house with the header resting on the ground. We'll hit the next page button. And we'll press and hold the header raise switch. This will have a lot of steps on this one. Um, the first part of this calibration is going to raise and lower fairly slow. As we get towards the end of the calibrations, uh, they will speed up. So now we're going to hit the lower switch and we're going to lower it back down. going to calibrate how much oil it takes to raise this head um, at a effective speed for the weight of the head. Calibration is complete. So to save our calibration, we're going to hit our accept arrow, and we have saved and successfully completed our feeder house raise speed calibration. Now we're going to jump into our header calibration. Uh, we're going to want to calibrate our header uh, the first time we hook up to it each year. Uh, if we get a new header, or if uh, we have to replace any of the sensors or components to our header height system. So to do that, we're going to go into our book with the wrench and then our black calibrate triangle. You can see we got a calibrations drop down box we're going to select on header. We've got to have the combine on level ground with the engine running at high idle. We'll hit accept. we got to lower the feeder house with the corn head resting on the ground and hit next. And we're just going to press and hold the header raise switch. It's going to raise the corn head up. And it says calibration complete we'll hit accept and we have successfully calibrated the header. Now we're going to touch on a few calibrations that uh, pertain to our yield and yield accuracy. The first one being our moisture uh, sensor temperature calibration. That's going to be um, 
in with our other calibrations. We'll hit the book with the wrench, our calibrate triangle, and then we're going to hit the drop down box. And we're going to scroll down until we see moisture sensor temperature. There's no initial conditions required. So right now, our sensor temperature is reading 65. closer to 75. We'll hit accept and we have calibrated our moisture sensor temperature calibration. Now we're going to run a mass flow vibration calibration. This one will be useful when uh, for harvest accuracy. Uh, you'll want to do it when you're changing crops and hooking up different heads or the first time you get a head. What this does is lets the combine discern what vibrations are from the combine and what vibrations are are coming from the crop actually going past that mass flow sensor. So to get there we're going to go to our book with the wrench, our calibration button, and then we've got our mass flow vibration. We're going to hit accept. It's going to want us um, to have our separator and header running. Uh, I would also encourage you to have the header in the harvest position and we're going to be at high idle for this. So I'll go ahead and engage the separator and the header. And it's going to calibrate and it says it may last up to 60 seconds. You will not want any grain in the grain tank or any grain coming through. You'll want it to be fairly clean so we're not getting any crop hitting that mass flow sensor up at the base of the fountain auger. Calibration complete, we'll hit the accept button, and that is it for our mass flow vibration calibration. So now we're in a S600 series combine with a flexible draper on it. Uh, going to run through a couple of the header calibrations on here and also the chassis tilt calibration for our active terrain adjust. Uh, to get to our calibrations, we're going to go to our book with the wrench, and then we're going to hit this black triangle. On this drop down, we're going to go and find our feeder house raise speed. We need to be on level ground with the combine running at high idle. We'll hit accept. We need to lower the feeder house so it's resting on the ground. the next step and it's going to ask us to press and hold the header raise switch. These first few times up and down it will go pretty slow as we get going through these calibrations as we raise it up and down a few times it's going to speed up a bit as we get to the end of this calibration. Essentially it's uh, trying to figure out how much oil it takes to raise and lower the head efficiently and effectively at a good speed. Step 11, we're about halfway there. It's 
I'm going to get a little bit faster here after this. Calibration is complete. We'll hit accept and it'll kick us back to the calibrations page. And so our feeder house raise speed calibration is now complete. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to go in and do a header calibration on S600 with a flexible draper on it. So, to do that, we're going to go to our book with the wrench, hit the calibrations button. We're going to hit the drop down and then go to header. We need to be on level ground with the engine running at high idle. It's going to take us into the header calibration. It's going to ask us to lower the header with the feeder house resting on the ground. We'll hit next step once we get that, and it's going to ask us to hold the header raise switch. It completed success successfully. So we'll hit the accept button. We have successfully calibrated our header. Now we're going to do a chassis tilt calibration on an S600 combine uh, equipped with active terrain adjust. The chassis tilt calibration is just going to uh, calibrate our tilt sensor for that active terrain adjust system. So if we go to our book with the wrench and then our calibrations page, look at our drop down box here. And we see we've got our chassis four aft tilt. vehicle needs to be on level ground and the header should be connected. Hit accept. What this does is basically zeroes out our pitch and roll. Calibration is complete, so we will save that calibration. And we have calibrated our chassis 4F tilt and are ready to run active terrain adjust.